This is HRT 125, Unit 15, Ecology. This is a picture of Mother Earth looking down at the North American uh, continent uh, covered by some clouds. Uh, you can see the Baja Peninsula off on the left-hand side, and you see Florida coming down on the right-hand side. This is a picture that we want to see in the future. Uh, this is a picture that we're starting to worry about as you pick up the newspaper and listen to the TV. Uh, every day now there's a question about uh, what's happening to the Earth. If we look around at this particular map right here, it shows you where we're trying to preserve as much of the plants and animals that we can. You can see the United States with a very high number, and yet you can look into parts of Africa where there's a very low number. The United States would cut down trees for the logging industry and replace them in a far greater number than they're cut down. In Africa, we may cut down one tree and not replace it uh, for years. And we think the number is probably 10% of the trees that we cut down. We have to address this issue, otherwise we won't have uh, many species left. We're worried about global warming now. As the Earth starts to warm up, we've all seen this picture on the uh, right-hand side, where if we look at the percentage of carbon dioxide related to temperature, it's going up and up. And the prediction's up, it could be 10 degrees higher, maybe 15 degrees higher in 20 years from now. This has happened in the past, but never as much as it was happening recently. Uh, with the advent of the Industrial Revolution, where we used a lot of our coal and our oil, as we used them up, we increased the carbon dioxide in the air and the temperature went up. There is a treaty called the Kyoto Protocol to look at this among different countries. Uh, the United States is not part of this at this time. We have studies out there to start looking at what else we can do. It's not just burning fossilized fuels, it's looking at other plants out there too. And as the next couple of slides go on, we'll show you different areas of the world and where different habitats are located. We call this ecology, where we start studying each of these populations. We start to look at how the community and the physical environment reacts with each other. We see how that's related to the north or south parts of the world, and as well as the east and west parts of the world. We can look at, for example, here in southern New England, it's called the trout lily, that you see down in the lower right-hand side. It looks like a very benign plant. Uh, however, it's very essential for the growth of the oak hickory forest in the New England area. We have to study this whole idea of sustainability. This allows us to interact with humans, society, the, our economy, ecology, how to work together in an environment to keep as many plants and animals around as possible. Uh, we're going to see later in different biomes the interaction of thousands of different species. No species can live by themselves on planet Earth. They all require a complex web of different animals and plants to survive for themselves. Humans require fertile soils, clean water, unpolluted air. We have to find a way to do that to save Mother Earth. We look at uh, different biomes. We look at a little niche inside of these ones. We look here at, for example, a coral reef. We've known about this for years, but coral must have a temperature between 64 to 97 degrees. 
they can't live anything less than uh, 80 feet. They have to have high salt content. They have to have waves because as the waves move across them, this allows them to remove the nutrients that it is in the water, take them themselves, and also the waves allow them for the rest of the material to be excreted and passed someplace else. These are essentials in different parts of the area. Um, for example, if we didn't have coral reefs around Florida, we might have washed Florida away by now. This is what we thought until just recently. Now we've discovered the coral actually can be even lower down in depths of the ocean. We've seen down miles down where we have vents where volcanoes are coming out. You can see coral living down there as well as other ant animals and plants. We have to protect all these areas that we can right now. When we look at plants, we have to think on a, a global idea with them. When you look at these two plants here, the giant spurge and the Oregon pipe cactus, it turns out they're remarkably similar. One's on Africa, one's in, in the Americas. For many years, we never understood how the two could be together. Was it birds bringing seeds around? Was it the seeds floating across the ocean? Uh, then we have discovered that at one point, the Earth consisted of one giant land mass. That the Earth consisted of different plates that float on top of each other, float upon the magma uh, underneath the crust, and these plates are drifting apart. One time, South America and Africa used to be joined. But thousands of years ago, they split. The ocean rushed between them, and these particular plants almost exactly the same because of this split moved off one to be in South America one to be in Africa there's other endangered plants out there the pitcher's thistle for example this plant lives out there in the desert area this helps put nutrients into the ground this helps break up the desert this helps the water we have to consider this idea of sustainability to save every plant that is out there. We don't know exactly how some of these plants continue the web of food that is out there, but if we do remove them, we find out that the entire web may die. Again, later on in some of these uh, biomes, we'll show you some small plants that save the whole area. And here's another picture of where these biomes are, uh, starting with the ice sheets at the very top and the bottom. Uh, and we see where the uh, subtropical rainforests are. Um, we see in Australia, where we have the different biomes, just like we have in North America, just like we might have in Europe. Each of these depend upon wind currents, uh, water currents, uh, rain patterns, uh, the amount of sunlight. A little closer at just the ones in the United States. Uh, in the Chicago area, we see that there are some grasslands. Uh, just north of us, we start seeing some uh, tempered broadleaf and mixed forests. Each of these are dependent upon weather patterns including rain patterns and wind patterns, soil conditions built all over the years. And each of them have different requirements of what we have to do to keep these biomes alive. We've seen problems in the past. Uh, for example, in the mixed prairie uh, and the short glass prairie, back in the 1930s, these were heavily farmed. And as they were heavily farmed, uh, the dirt was turned over, and not much thought was given to sustainability and conservation. And as we had a drier pattern, the dust started to raise up in the air. And at one point, the dust continued all the way from Oklahoma to New York City. Dust piled up in houses. Uh, 
to fill the entire house. This caused a mass migration of humans from these areas, and this is one of the reasons why the California was populated. All the farmers from these Dust Bowl areas moved across. We didn't have the right way to treat this area. We treat them better now, and so these mixed prairies are coming back now. 